I don't really know what these things are. I pulled them out of the river at an old paper mill site, but what I'm gonna do is clean them up some more, cut them up, and try to make a rotary table out of them. I don't have one, and I don't really wanna spend a lot of money on one, so I'm gonna try to make one here. Working from this hole, I can get about seven inches around. So I'm gonna kinda of chop it up a little bit, get it to a size that's reasonable to put on the lathe, and go from there. Well, it turns out I didn't really have a great way to cut this thing, so it was a lot of work with the angle grinder. Got that cut, got the corners cut off it, so it's roughly the right shape. Now I've got it on the mill, and I just wanna deck this piece off so that I have a nice flat surface to go against the back of the chuck. taking pretty light cuts and just letting the lathe do its thing. It's just taking a while, but it'll get there. It's getting close. Couple more passes. So after a couple of passes, gotten through most of the rust and scale. I had to switch to a carbide tool because whatever was in there, on there, uh, the high-speed steel wasn't cutting it. Obvious that this is not the greatest casting. There's some porosity in it. I'm going to give it one more pass, see if it cleans up a little more, and if not, I'm just going to call it good like that. Between passes, I'm getting in, wiping down the dovetails here, get all that grit crud out. So one last thing to do on this setup is I want to scribe index lines on here. So I've got a just a threading tool set up sideways here and I'm just using the carriage to go back and forth. Scribe that line. And then to index this, I've got a 72 tooth gear on here, which for each tooth will give me five degrees. And I just have another gear clamped in on this clamp to lock it in place. So all I'm doing is to advance it, just loosen this, drop this down, advance one tooth, tighten that back up. And then there is some backlash in here, so I'm just holding it up against each time I do it. Cut another line. And then do it again. So the last thing I want to do with this setup is just cut a spiral groove for oil in this. So I have it set to cut a 2 TPI groove in here because I can. I'm cutting this left-handed so it's moving away from the headstock just so I don't have to worry about crashing it.
This is one of the original pieces I started with, but I have to add some other ones in there. So we'll get these cleaned up and then get them all put together. Next up, I want to get some holes drilled through this to lock all three pieces together. I've got the tap drill for a 5 16 screw here, and I've got the depth set so that when the coil is all the way down, it bottoms out right where I want it. And I also have a mark here for the clearance hole so that it doesn't go down into the bottom piece. Drill all these holes with the tap drill, clearance drill it, go back and counter bore it. and also drill and ream some holes for some dowel pins to lock it all together. Then I'll pull it all apart, tap the holes, and put it all back together. That'll just help keep it straight. I did some test fits to make sure everything fits together and got these plates cleaned up really well. You might have noticed there's one hole missing here. That's because this is where the crank for the worm gear or for the worm is going to go. Um, and I also planned it out so that the worst pitting in this will hopefully get cut away for that. But we'll get this all buttoned up. Um, I also also went ahead and cut some notches for clamping it down and drilled a hole there so that when I flip it over and start working on the other side, I don't have to worry about drilling into the table. And that'll let me, once I bore it out, that'll let me indicate the bore for the table. But this is about ready to get all buttoned up here. These dowel pins aren't quite as tight of a fit as I would like, so... We'll cheat it here and use some Loctite on them. That is pretty well locked together, and I'm also almost certain that it's pretty well distorted now. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape it. Uh, I've got a scraper that I made out of a broken carbide end mill. Just ground a little radius on it and five degree rake, and then just reamed a hole in this rusty bolt. Popped it in there with some oil. It's just held in by suction, uh, but this thing works pretty well for a piece of junk reamer. I'm going to save you watching most of this, but here we go. So this is after two rounds of scraping. There's a little bit of blue starting to show up on it, but got a long way to go. I'm a bit of a hack when it comes to hand scraping. I mean, I understand the general process, but just the specifics I'm a little weak on. I haven't done it a whole lot. You can see I'm getting some pretty heavy prints when I re-ink the surface plate sometimes. But really what I'm going for isn't any sort of point count on this, just generally getting it flat so when I, uh, so when I bolt it down to the mill table, 
it doesn't warp or distort. And I think I've got this pretty good. I'm missing a little bit here and here uh, and here. There's a spot. But I'm also going to cut a big hole in the middle of this. And I don't know how it's going to distort when I do that since it is built up of, out of a bunch of different pieces. I'm going to go ahead and bore out the hole and leave it a little bit short of the final dimension and then come back and check and see how flat it is and finish up the scraping now yeah, because I'm kind of tired of it right now. I've got this thing bored out to about 3.2 inches, so it's got about another 200,000 to come off of the diameter. I want to check and see if it's distorted any from scraping it in before and then finish scraping it. These all seem pretty tight still, that's a good sign. That's obviously a really heavy print, but it really hasn't changed very much. It's still here, here, here and there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish scraping this. I think my appetite for doing much more scraping on this is just about worn out. I do have contact outside of this area and got some through here. Other than that it's pretty decent amount of contact all over and it just needs to sit flat on the mill table so I think I'm going to call that pretty good. I'm at the point where I'm just trying to creep up on the final dimension just to get the fit just right. So it's a lot of small passes, measuring, remeasuring, spring passes over and over again. There it is ever slightly looser than I would like, I think. I think once it sits down the whole way, this is flat and it's tightened up, I think it'll be pretty good. I'm gonna say it's gonna be pretty good. It's gonna be pretty good. I'm actually gonna try to use the boring head to fly cut it so I can do it all in one pass and I'll see how that goes. I just did a spring pass with the head pulled way out. The surface finish isn't spectacular, but it should be pretty flat, which is what we want for now. Did a cursory check on the surface plate here, just to get an idea of where it's high, where it's low, and where to start scraping. Obviously, I've got a lot of scraping to do here. So it occurred to me that trying to check something for parallelism using the indicator on a surface that by its nature is somewhat uneven, is not really a good idea. So I put a parallel on here. I did check the parallel to make sure that was uh, actually parallel. Now I'm going to go through and check for a parallelism on this and then I can adjust as I scrape. Checking with the indicator, it looked like this corner is low, which is the same thing that the print tells us. So I think we're on the right track. We'll just keep scraping. I'm not going to say I'm done scraping this, but I've got the bottom scraped in pretty well. I'll say I've got the top scraped well enough to move forward on this. I might go back and do more later. I might not. I probably won't. But a little oil, and it moves really nicely. And it really locks in there. I've obviously still got a long way to go on this, but I think this video's gone on long enough, so I think I'm going to leave off here. Thanks for watching.